Now, even though I'm a huge armchair fan of the brand, I hadn't actually driven a McLaren until a couple of months ago when I was able to slip behind the wheel of the 765 LT Spider. And I have to say that that car set a new high watermark for me in terms of driving excitement and engagement. So when McLaren called me up and asked me if I wanted to drive the new Artura around Southern Nevada for a little while, I have to admit that I didn't particularly have high hopes. After all, how could a hybridized V6 ever possibly live up to the twin turbocharged V8 monster that was under the deck lid of that 765 LT. Well, to my surprise, the Artura is a genuine thrill on a public road, and as you and I are about to find out, it's pretty darn fun on a track as well. But before we go too much further, please be sure to subscribe to the Motor One YouTube channel and follow us on all of your favorite social media, that's TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, what have you, using the handle at MotorOne.com. Before we hit the road, let's just take a moment to step back and have a look at the Artura. It doesn't break a ton of new ground design-wise, but it's still a pretty little thing thanks to its athletic stance and shortish 104-inch wheelbase. McLaren's shrink-wrap styling is in full effect, with a plunging front end and a high rear deck for that sensuous supercar shape. The Artura's seamless design also boasts a single-piece rear clamshell, providing both better aerodynamics and styling. Rounded forms, crescent-shaped headlights, and a matrix engine cover give the Mac a strong family resemblance. Inside, the Artura is a bit more modern than the cars that came before it, with a new infotainment system displayed on an 8-inch screen. A thumb wheel handles volume and home button duties, and finally, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto have arrived at McLaren. Visibility all around is excellent, materials are nice to look at and touch, and there's a good amount of space inside to do the important job of driving. And speaking of driving, let's get the broad strokes out of the way first. This car has a 3-liter twin-turbocharged V6, which mates with a compact electric motor mounted between the engine and the 8-speed dual-clutch transmission, giving the Artura a total of 671 horsepower and 531 pound-feet, and that is more than enough for a car that weighs just a hair over 3,000 pounds. This is a really lightweight and agile-feeling car, which is even more impressive given the fact that there's a 7.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery mounted in the floor. It's really impressive that they were able to make this car feel as lightweight and flingable and tossable as they did because it is indeed a hybrid. In fact, it's the lightest car in its class, hybrid or not. Those engineers also deserve a ton of credit for that very wide angle 135 degree V6, which is packaged a little bit more like a flat six. Because of how wide the cylinder banks are spaced, it gives it an actually shorter crankshaft, which means that the engineers didn't have to strengthen it to compensate for the added length. It also helps the car have a very short wheelbase, which makes it feel incredibly nimble when you're out on a twisty road. The McLaren Artura also has a really slick set of driving modes, which are operated via these little switches on the top of the instrument binnacle. This one handles the powertrain and this one handles the suspension, which is great because it means you can pair the fully electric mode with, say, the fully race-ready super hardcore dampers. So if you want to have a really good time going around corners without necessarily burning a lot of fuel in the process, you can do that. You can also manually select the stability control settings independent of the engine, transmission, and suspension, which is great because if you want to have everything to be fully aggressive for a really fun sporty drive on a public road, but retain a thick measure of intervention from the stability control to keep you from swapping the thing end over end, you can do that. It's really kind of a perfect vehicle for an on-road driving enthusiast. Part of that also comes down to the divine steering. McLaren has always been known for having kind of one of the more sporty steering setups on the supercar market, and it's just as good here as it is in any of the other products. And that's because it is a hydraulic setup, so you still have a lot of feel and a lot of response that doesn't get filtered through a fussy electric motor. The brake pedal, likewise, is pretty darn brilliant. Again, McLaren is known for having a very responsive brake pedal, and you don't actually have a ton of travel in the brake pedal, which means you can go all the way to full panic stopping really, really easily. Right now, we're on our way to Las Vegas Motor Speedway, which, for the most part, is gonna be a fairly flat, straight drive route, but that's gonna help us see where the McLaren Artura really shines, especially compared to some of the company's other more aggressive products. This is a really comfortable supercar, thanks in part to the adaptive dampers, which you can tune for track, sport, or comfort. And in comfort mode, it is a pretty smooth riding vehicle. It's also not particularly loud, with one exception. 
when you're driving down the road at freeway speeds and you're just giving it a little bit of throttle to keep up with traffic, you do kind of get this booming resonance that goes throughout the cabin and it does get pretty tiresome. Now, one thing that's abundantly apparent on the Artura is something that McLaren so consistently gets right and that's the behavior of the dual clutch gearbox. This eight speed unit is a little bit more advanced than the seven speed found in other McLarens, but it has the same really awesome inertia push system that McLaren uses in that gearbox. Now, lest we forget, we need to talk a little bit about the fact that the Artura is indeed a plug-in hybrid. The charge rate is only about three kilowatts, which isn't terribly impressive, but by limiting it like that, it means that you don't need a massive DC to DC inverter. You can kind of just keep all of the electrical architecture pretty lightweight and small and it kind of helps maintain this car's nimble feel. When you're driving around in electric only mode you get 91 horsepower and 135 pound-feet of torque and the McLaren will let you do that up to a speed of about 81 miles an hour before the gas engine fires on. Now that's definitely not enough power to really add a whole lot of momentum when you're already at freeway speeds but it's kind of nice because you can drive this thing in hybrid mode and have the absolute time of your life and then when you get into your neighborhood and you want to kind of blend in you can just flop it over into electric mode and just glide into your driveway silent and drama free. Now in a cruel twist of fate, I wasn't actually able to drive the 765 LT on a track, which is really unfortunate because that is that car's natural habitat. However, I do get to drive the Artura on a track, which is where we're headed next. This is an incredibly user-friendly supercar. The limits are obviously very high, but the Artura approaches them with plenty of communication and warning. This isn't a vehicle that wants to bite you in the ass if you overdo it. Instead, it's rather easy to scrub off speed, tighten up your line, and try again on the next corner. Of course, that feeling of safety does make you sacrifice a little bit of the terror-based thrill found in the 765LT, but the Artura is a sweet little plaything nonetheless, and it is willing to get sideways if you want it to. The bottom line is this. The Artura has what it takes to keep up with some of McLaren's best cars in history when you're out on a twisty canyon road. And it doesn't come apart on the track either. It's a really willing dance partner that lets you have a whole lot of fun while also keeping you safe with a nice dose of stability. Add on to the fact that it's pretty darn fuel efficient for a supercar and that it has 11 miles of all electric range and it really kind of feels like a very impressive offering. I'm not gonna lie, the 765 LT probably will always be a much more exhilarating and exciting proposition but in terms of daily driving, the Artura might be my pick of the litter.